Hey there Cosmic Warriors and welcome back to another video and if you are new here my name is Hannah I am a Western practical astrologer okay so in today's video we are going to be talking all about this upcoming solar eclipse in Aries okay I hope you're doing well I hope that you are taking care of yourselves especially because we're in between eclipses Right, so we had the lunar eclipse in Libra on the 25th of March, and we are coming up to this solar eclipse in Aries. So we're officially, you know, we're in the heart of eclipse season and it can be tiresome. So I would definitely recommend some rest when you can, right? Trying to go inward <clears throat> and just trying to take it easy. Um do excuse me, I have a bit of a cough, a bit of a tickle in the back of my throat, which I'm hoping will clear up as time goes on, but I will just show this presentation. Hi, Danielle. Hi, Alexander. Welcome to you both. I hope you're both doing well. And hey, it is Easter weekend for those of you who uh, celebrate um, so yeah, happy Easter to those of you who do, uh, and also just in general, <clears throat> if you're taking some time off over the spring, over springtime, maybe spring break, something like that, yeah, I hope you have a lovely uh, weekend. Hello, hi to Eleanor, hello to Daniela, hi, hi, hi. Right, so the solar eclipse is going to happen in Aries on the 8th of April, <clears throat> Um, and I do just, just want to say that to remind you, if you're interested in any of my products, you can go to hannahsellsport.com, ebooks, guides, merch, all that good stuff over at hannahsellsport.com. You can book a reading with me over there. And I do want to give a massive thank you to my patrons over at Patreon. Um, there's quite a few of you um, and I'm so, so grateful for your support. And I really hope that you do continue to <clears throat> benefit from the Patreon. If you're interested in joining, the link is in the description box. And you can get access to all of those things linked or described. <coughs> Do you excuse me? As I say, I have a tickle in the back of my throat. But if you look here, just whilst I'm having some water, look here. We're going to be breaking down these aspects today, okay? <clears throat> Okay, so we have the sun, <clears throat> moon, and Chiron all at 19 degrees in Aries. We also have Mercury retrograde happening. So Mercury retrograde is going to be from the 1st of April all the way up until the 25th of April. Then naturally we have the, the North Node also in Aries, South Node in Libra. Plus we have Venus in Aries. So there is this big Aries stellium <clears throat> happening during this eclipse. Then what we also notice here is that the eclipse is going to square Ceres. Okay, so there is Ceres in <coughs> Capricorn there. So we're going to touch on that. Now, when we look to the dispositor of all of the Aries energy, the dispositor of the solar eclipse, that is Mars. So Mars is actually going to conjunct Saturn. So there's going to be a new cycle coming up. <clears throat> a new synodic cycle to do with Mars and Saturn. That is going to be on the 10th of April, which we're going to touch on today. <clears throat> now, these planets are also creating sextiles to Jupiter and Uranus as well in Taurus. Plus, <clears throat> Venus is creating a square to Vesta in Cancer as well as a sextile to Pluto. Up top here, this is a bundle shape, right? So when we remove <clears throat> all the asteroids, points, stuff like this, and we just really focus on the main um, planets, so plus, you know, the uh, so Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, we see here this bundle shape. And what this essentially creates then in the skies is great focus, okay? Great focus, great concentration. This can be a pretty remarkable um, shape in that we can feel like, you know, we can accomplish whatever we, we want within um, the areas that hold the, the bundle. So as you can see, this bundle shape is mostly located within Aries with the stellium. 
and then also Taurus, Pisces, and then there is that little bit of Aquarius with Pluto also being there. Um, so <clears throat> do keep in mind where you have these signs, especially Pisces, Aries, and Taurus, where you have them in your chart, because that is going to show you such a, a focus, a big, big focus, um, especially coming up to the eclipse and during the eclipse. Naturally, with that being said, there can be tunnel vision <clears throat> when it comes to this shape. So fitting because Aries can be like this. <laughs> Aries is the ram. So Aries can have this, this tunnel vision where it doesn't, you know, doesn't really pay attention to what is happening around it. It's just more about I'm focusing on this thing and I'm, I'm charging at it. And, you know, that can be useful. It can be enterprising. This can show commitment on our part as well. However, what this can also indicate when it comes to the bundle shape is we can take things too far. We can go to extremes and we can also neglect other areas of our lives. So you can even look at this as, okay, Libra is the opposite sign of Aries. So with a stellium, especially being in Aries, it's always important to balance out that energy with the opposite sign. So as I said, with Libra, it's important, um, of course, considering the siphon is also there, but it's important to keep in mind just, okay, how can I think things through? So for example, if you do feel like you just want to charge ahead, you want to say that thing, especially Mercury retrograde, uh, <clears throat> consider how you can maybe take a beat. Here's the thing. Find power in the pause pause. That is a word that's been coming up a lot for me. Pause. Just be mindful. Be mindful during this eclipse. The energy is going to be high. It's going to be intense. Many of us could feel very, very angered. And this is not to say that anger is a bad thing. I also actually think anger is going to be a very transformative thing during this eclipse, but it's still about how we go about expressing and sharing that anger. Yeah, so that's where I think the Libra part of it can say, take a beat, take a pause, think this, think this through. <clears throat> also consider, you know, how such matters can um, impact your relationships. Okay, <clears throat> so now we have explored just the overview. This eclipse is happening at 19 degrees. So nine plus one is 10. So this then essentially equivalents to the number one in numerology. Therefore, this solar eclipse, it, it also carries this vibration of, I suppose it's very fitting with, with Aries, right? The first sign, number one, leadership, power, being active, being assertive. This is also solo energy, right? This is the type of energy that, that says, I'm going on my own path. <laughs> Many of us will be going our own way. Let's just say this, not necessarily on the day, but you can maybe reflect on this and maybe think what is happening, what has been unfolding, even since the lunar eclipse in Libra on the 25th of March. What powerful relationship <laughs> matters came from your unconscious and into your conscious awareness and what chapters did you close or are you in the process of closing because naturally when it comes to eclipses there is a fading process so the similarly when with when we look to the solar eclipse in Aries it's the same kind of thing of fade allow things to unfold pay attention see what changes arise so yes, indeed, this is very much about our independence. And I would also say that this is an eclipse that's very ambitious. <laughs> it's going to show us um, how hardworking we can be and how like dedicated we can also be. Even the eclipse is happening within an Aries Leo Deacon. So this is very much about self, self, ego, our vitality, our health. I mean, this could very well be a situation where by us putting ourselves first, it's for our own good. It's for our health. It's for our well-being. It's for our, our spirit. In order for our spirit to feel fulfilled, if we are to feel somewhat good about ourselves, then perhaps this is really a time of, okay, 
time to make those decisions. Make those decisions. What do you want? Aries always asks, what do you want? And when you know what you want, go get it. Get it. So just to remind you as well, solar eclipses, <clears throat> they are linked to significant new chapters and powerful beginnings. And with this being a mighty <laughs> total solar eclipse <laughs> in Aries, <clears throat> excuse me, oh my goodness, so much is going to come up and out. <laughs> and there's a lot I feel to work through in terms of it goes back to what we want, where we're headed, thinking about self, thinking about our life path. This is so much about self-discovery and being brave enough to take that leap, to take that next step, to enter this new chapter, this new significant chapter of your life within your Aries house. And it's, yeah, it's going to be scary. It's going to be testing. It's going to feel uncomfortable. I mean, Chiron's there, right? Chiron is like, oh right? There's that, that pain element to Chiron. There's the wounding element to Chiron. But there's also the part of Chiron that says, I'm going to be wise. I'm going to be a sage. This is what I'm going to learn from this next step. You just might not see the, how do we say, the growth instantly. And that makes sense. It makes sense because Aries is the first sign. Aries is about, okay, beginning stages, but the beginning stages aren't going to show you how things are going to unfold further on down the line. But it's about that first step. And it's having that audacity. Audacity is a big, big word for this solar eclipse. Do you have the audacity to go after what you want? To head down a completely different direction? To go on this whole new journey that you never thought possible before? Notable new opportunities with solar eclipses. Indeed, this is a phase, this is a new beginning worth paying attention to within your Aries house. And it's also about planting seeds for the future. So, as I say, when it comes to new moons, solar eclipses, it's all about the beginning. It's it's at the start of it. So the start of a cycle. So imagine it as if you are uh, placing a few seeds in the ground and you water them, right? You need to water them. You need to make sure that they're getting enough sunlight just to look after them, to nurture them. And then this is where we see the growth. It's so interesting to me because we go from Aries and then we go to Taurus after. And that Taurus part of it, it, it signifies this, right? The, the, this whole vision of watering the seeds and giving the seeds what they need, you know, to look after them. So it is about that that progress. So in terms of the solar eclipse, oh my gosh, it's going to feel powerful. It's going to pack a punch. Indeed, it's going to pack a punch, uh, especially with Venus being there. Whew. Yes. And the other thing I want to say is solar eclipses can be a time period of us addressing our shadow. Okay, going within maybe trying to make sense of how we got to a certain point or make sense of why we are the way we are. This is not a good or bad thing. It's just more about reflection. And that within itself, I think is going to be very, very healing and actually very profound for many of us because of Chiron. And like I said, at the very beginning of this presentation, rest. Rest when you can during the eclipse. I'm just going to read through your comments. Let me have a look. I'm glad that my throat has cleared up a little bit. I do apologize. <clears throat> yes. Fi vibrate high. Yes. Hello, Rachel. Hello, Empress Energy. Welcome. Okay. We have some dates here. <clears throat> so... The last set of eclipses that happens on the Aries Libra axis was 2013, from 2013 until 2016. So try to maybe think about that time period. What came up for you with respect to relationships versus yourself, with respect to the ways in which you maybe connect with others versus the ways in which you connect with you and the person that you are? 
you know, Aries is so, such a sign of identity, but then Libra is is also then a sign of, of reflection and kind of, you know, relating to other people and seeing what we can learn from others and even integrating parts of the shadow that maybe we didn't want to see before. So do consider what happened around those time periods for you. And eclipses... <clears throat> Are happening again this time in the signs on this axis and it all started March 2023 and then we'll end and close March 2025. Aries will close these eclipses with Mars being Cancer and that's an interesting one because Mars is going to be going retrograde in Leo and Cancer this year. <laughs> it's going to be an interesting start to 2025 I'll say that. Right, so with this particular solar eclipse, the dispositor of it, Mars, is in Pisces, which we will explore. But what I also want to mention about all of this is 2025 is going to really usher in something even newer in terms of how our generations are going to change and how we as a society are going to change. And um, because Saturn and Neptune will enter Aries through 2025, of course, that will just be a little peak, <laughs> a sneak peak. But by 2026, things will really start to kick off and a new cycle will be ushered in. But all of this is to say that what's happening right now within your Aries house, what's been, what has been unfolding within your Aries house has something to, to say about what's up ahead you know, when it comes to astrology, it's very, very interesting because it really is just like reading a book about your life, right? It's just seeing how you go through phases and how there is such an interconnectedness uh, when it comes to following the planets. Right. So now we have explored a few important dates for you to think about. Let's break it down. So Sun and Moon will conjunct Chiron. And this then is the start of a new cycle. Then when we fast forward to the first quarter moon in Aries, this will be January 2025. That will be at 16 degrees. So that will be a time period when whatever intentions, whatever significant seeds we plant within our Aries house during this eclipse, they will be tested January 2025. So this is what I'm saying about matters unfolding. It's about giving things time, intentions you set time. And by October 2025, the full moon in Aries will happen at 14 degrees. So that will be a time period when all this stuff I've been talking about, or w which I will <laughs> talk about. So when we think about your horoscopes today, which I'm going to hopefully explain in detail for you, so you can get a sort of good understanding about what's up ahead. But whatever intentions then come up around the solar eclipse, things will be illuminated. Things will come to light. There will be great clarity by that time. So do consider... What seeds are you planting when it comes to your drive, your ambitions? This is truly an eclipse of new beginnings. And Aries is so much about how we defend ourselves, how we act, how we set goals. Aries is the sign that follows its passions, right? Aries is the part of us, even explain it in that way, because we all have a piece of each sign within us. So Aries is the sign within us that says, I want to follow my passions and I want to achieve. And I want you to also remember the double, <laughs> the double moon, right? The, those new moons that we experienced um, in Aries last year. So we opened Aries season with a new moon in Aries at zero degrees and then we closed Aries season 2023 with this, this solar eclipse in Aries at 29 degrees. And then later on, the North Node entered Aries in July, 
from that 29 degree point. So a lot of activations were happening. So indeed, those moons opened and closed the season. Um, and then in between the season, the half point, we were asked to really consider uh, the next challenge, right? We were, it was about, okay, what is up ahead? Maybe even this could be where it, that time last year, we could sense, right? There was some sense of, oh, okay, what's, what's up ahead here? And it is interesting because <clears throat> this, this solar, this total solar eclipse in Aries is at 19 degrees. So as I say, that's at that halfway point. <laughs> it's at the halfway point now. So maybe there's a part of this solar eclipse where we are looking back and we're also looking forward. <laughs> there's a part of us that is facing backward and it's it's all as a way to want to catapult us forward so that we can learn, right? So we cannot make the same mistakes or do the same sort of unconscious things. Do you have what it takes though? Do you have what it takes during the solar eclipse to step up to the next challenge? Do you? Ari says, bring it on, right? Bring it on is such a slogan, I think, for Aries. So the sun and moon, when we think about the sun and moon, the sun is so much about our conscious self, right? Our conscious awareness, our ego, our vitality. And the moon then is about our unconscious. So the, this is about our conscious and unconscious pairing up together and starting this new leadership cycle. So this could be where many of us feel on fire, we're pumped, we're just, we're ready to go. We're ready to take on this new project, this new job, this new relationship. And this is also about being straightforward and on, and insisting on having things our way. Being direct about our emotional needs as well, right? Really being actually very honest about how we feel. Here's what I'm learning about Aries, especially moon in Aries, right? Consider that this is about, you know, the significance of the moon being in Aries with this being um, a new moon in this sign. But what I'm learning about Aries is Aries just is not a sign that can deny how it feels. It's not a sign that can lie to itself or just sort of play pretend or um, hide, really. If anything, if, if this occurs within our Aries house, um, if we do this, if we perhaps deny or not listen to that, that kind of this, the voice of, okay, this, this is what my instinct is saying. This is what my gut is saying. It, it gets louder. <laughs> it gets louder. Oh my God, my gosh. The Aries part of us is so magnificent because Aries helps us redirect our lives. Aries helps us direct our lives to where we want to go, but also how we redirect it, how we change paths how we realize, oh, 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 no, oh, okay, I'm going to switch over to this side, okay, but there's a directness in this, and there's also a boldness, and it's about being somewhat daring and, and brave, and it's about being willing to take a risk. Aries can be quite foolhardy, and, and interestingly, even though Aries can be at times reckless, impulsive, <clears throat> It's, it's also Aries' own recklessness and Im um, impulsiveness that can be so um, amazing. Hold on. I'm about to cough. I am sorry. Two seconds. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Oh, I don't know. I was fine. I've been fine all day. And then all of a sudden come on live and I've got a cough. Anyway, we're going, we're going. So the point being, 
even though Aries can be reckless, you would be surprised by how Aries on recklessness, which may not actually be that reckless if you kind of think about it, because it could very well work out for them, right? It's that kind of thing of, if you don't start something, how would you ever know? How would you ever know, right? Aries is that sign that reminds us that <clears throat> one, life begins outside of your comfort zone. And two, if you don't change something, if you don't put yourself first, or if you don't try something new, how would you ever know? You Sure, right? If you, for example, you start a new project, maybe you want to present to, to someone and you think to yourself, well, what if I feel? But what if you don't? What if it, like, what if it goes incredibly well? <clears throat> what if you actually do so amazingly and then other opportunities come up, come about from that? So Aries is that spark. Aries is the initiation, right? The ability to go, hey, I'm going to do it. So it's about getting the energy. It's about going for it. It's having this just do it <clears throat> mindset right that is Aries just do it bring it on is a slogan just do it is another slogan Aries can be bold confident and determined so <clears throat> this is about you considering these matters that I'm talking about today coming up to the solar eclipse and again we're going to talk about your horoscopes so we'll be touching on this stuff but I also want to mention Aries is about winning Aries wants to win of course it's kind of funny because I remember um, there was a situation that happened when someone um, asked me about game shows, you know, sort of game shows um, and something along the lines of, would you want to win? And I thought, well, yeah, I, you know, what? why would I compete if I didn't want to win? You know, and some people would say, oh, it's just taking part that counts. It's just to take part. I'm like, yeah, taking part's fun. But if I'm in a competition, I want to win. <laughs> it doesn't mean I will win. Um, and if I don't win, it's still about being able to be happy for other people and cheerleading other people. And Aries can do this. <clears throat> but the point being, Aries is the part of us that wants to win. And, and that's OK. You know, healthy competition can be great. And at the same time, it doesn't necessarily have to be where we're competing for a prize or we're competing against other people it's also about competing against ourselves, right? This is about doing a previous version of ourselves. This is what we're noticing with eclipses happening in Aries with the North Node also being in, being there. Keep in mind that from the eclipses I talked about a moment ago, so from 2013 until uh, 2016, the North Node was in Libra at that time. So this is where things have switched. And this is more so about, okay, you are, you're, you're growing, you're outgrowing previous versions of yourself and you're competing against your personal best. Aries is so about this. Aries has this, this drive, this passion, this will, this motivation to go, do you know what? I've done it this way for a bit, but I'm going to try it in a new way. And I'm going to, I do the old way. And of course, Aries is also very relentless. <laughs> it's so interesting to me because often it's said about Aries where this is a sign that can start loads of projects and not finish those projects. And yes, Aries can be impatient. Aries represents the part of us that can get bored easily and, you know, start a project, then kind of be like, ah, oh, I don't feel the spark, the passion, and then start something else. But when Aries really does feel that passion and there is a, <clears throat> a fierceness to it, there's a strength and a power to it, they are relentless, right? Aries is the sign that goes, oh, so these people want to see me fail. Uh, <laughs> these people want to see me give up. Oh, well, watch me, right? Aries goes, watch me, watch me win, watch me succeed. They're relentless. And it's the relentlessness that keeps them going. Okay, <clears throat> so moving on to Chiron, right? Chiron. Chiron. Chiron is also 
in this sign at 19 degrees. So really, because they're all 19 degrees, Chiron is a part of this, right? There's a merging process. All of these celestial bodies are, are merged. They're combined together in a cake mix, if you will, this cosmic soup. So Chiron says, this is also about leadership healing that has been happening that since Chiron has been in Aries for the past few years. But it's also a very testing time for our Aries placements. So definitely, I mean, look to your chart. If you do have um, placements in Aries, you are going to feel <laughs> this eclipse more strongly. For me, for example, I have the moon in Aries. It's at 15 degrees. As you can see there, the north node is at 15 degrees. So it's the north node is right on my moon. But then this eclipse is just four degrees away from my moon. So maybe try and gauge this as being about even 29 degrees of Aries. And um, so I would say even from about 12 ish, 12 to 29 degrees, even 10 to 29 degrees, just look and see which placements you have. Naturally, you want to consider if you've got any oppositions to Libra. So if you've got maybe planets or placements in, in Libra from about 10 to 29 degrees, then there's going to be the oppositions happening. Um, and then we also want to think about the squares to Cancer and Capricorn. So again, consider those degrees. Sextiles as well, you know, to Aquarius and Gemini there. Um, and then trines as well to Sagittarius and, and Leo. But yeah, look to look to your own chart. But for Aries placements, it's going to be particularly potent, right? And there's an element here of feeling like you, you can't seem to catch a break, right? Chiron can show us where we've been deeply wounded, right? I mean, ugh, as if you've been beat down, as if people have aggressively tried to test you and come at you self-doubt being feeling really like defeated you know like we are this wounded soldier on this battlefield which is kind of interesting because Aries is the sign of war isn't it but <clears throat> this could be where we really feel like giving up <laughs> but <laughs> interestingly this is also a solar eclipse that I think is going to be really energizing and it's going to actually get us to be more confident <laughs> about these matters because, you know, the sun is also a part of it. Um, and it's kind of saying, wear your battle scars with pride, wear them with confidence, get back up, keep fighting. But hey, you know what I'm going to also say about this? Know what battles to choose wisely. This is what it, this solar eclipse is also about knowing as well instinctively like when you really really search within it's coming to terms with hey I've I've done this consistently and I and I've tried I've even switched things up but you know what I, I'm out I'm tapping out and that's okay right it's okay to tap out it's okay to say hey I don't want to do this anymore it's not for me energetically I'm not aligned. I don't want it. Hey, Aries can go. I love this about Aries. Aries is the sign that can go. I don't like that. And you know what? <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Right. And there is that honesty. And just because, you know, Aries says that, you know, that it represents a part of its part of us that can say, I don't like that. That doesn't mean that other people can't like it. But it's so interesting to think that when you say that, other people get so offended. <laughs> so offended, like, hi, can you not like that? No, but I like it. No, no, no. Yeah, I respect that. Yeah, I respect that. I'm just saying that I, I don't, uh, if you're going to get offended about it, all right. You know, this is Aries. <laughs> just keeps it, keeps it straightforward. And I do, I, I respect that. I respect that about Aries, this sign. But what I also want to mention um, is that this is about addressing our, our anger <laughs> during this eclipse. The anger is real. The pain of self, the pain of times when we denied ourselves, right? The pain associated with times, hey, whenever we said, 
hey, I don't like that. And then someone argued with us for some reason about not liking something. And then we actually disrespected ourselves by going, oh, okay, okay. You know, the South Node is in Libra reminding us of this, right? Rem reminding us of this kind of, this, this story of um, people pleasing and times when we sort of agree with people when actually we don't agree, <laughs> but we're just agreeing because we want to keep the peace. And there's more nuance to what I'm saying. Of course, there's so much more nuance to it. Contact Context is also everything. But, you know, maybe you can reflect on your own life and kind of think of times when you you didn't really stand, stand up for yourself. You didn't really stay true to what you needed in that moment and what you wanted in that moment. And you just kind of played more of a submissive role. And then you just got really angry and annoyed later on. And then it kind of felt a bit unfair, right? But you see, <sighs> Chiron is here, right? Chiron is the wounded healer. Chiron is about wisdom and Chiron is the teacher saying you have the courage to face yourself to go through the pain you have what it takes to challenge yourself here you have what it takes to step up to to defend yourself if you need to this is about staying true to what it is that we actually want and what we stand for even if that can be really difficult to do or if we're sort of afraid or we are reminded of the many times when we were, were rejected, right? We were rejected by others for showcasing our own identity and they didn't like it. <clears throat> we felt sort of like we were left out in the cold. There was this barren sort of feeling. <clears throat> okay. Here's the thing, nobody can take that away from you. Nobody can take your identity away from you, your, your story, your story, your life, your experiences. Nobody, nobody knows your personal story more than you. And <clears throat> nobody knows the energy that you have put in and the times when the world tried to tell you who you are. So remember that, right? Remember that this is a solar eclipse that is so much about self and the healing of self. And this is about integrating the parts of you that can stand up for yourself, that can say, no, no more. I don't want to. I don't like that. That's not for me. Right? This... <sighs> This is a solar eclipse of being assertive, having the right, the, the right to say, I don't know. I don't understand. No. <laughs> Someone said under one of my most recent reels um, that no is a complete sentence. And I just thought, yeah, <laughs> so, so true. But the victory is yours. You just need to stand by it and not give in to other people's necessary, unnecessary feedback. You know, when people give you unsolicited advice, like, uh, and they don't actually know the full story. They don't actually know anything apart from a couple of sentences. And then all of a sudden they're just trying to tell you how to live your life because they think they know what's best for you. And they think they know who you are. <laughs> this I'm telling you. This is a solar eclipse that says no more. This is about your own way. And it's also about being cautious of overcompensating because that's another thing. We could very well overcompensate, right? Where we could sort of take it a different direction and go, I'm so sure of myself and I know who I am. And, you know, maybe go a little bit too, too far, maybe because there is something that isn't quite healed or we're feeling a little bit insecure right? Sort of acting tough, because Aries can be like this, I'm so tough, I'm so tough, oh, you know, mm, but really, it's, it's, it's holding space for the softness, right? Softness, sensitivity, 
feeling, depth, intimacy, right? There's healing that can be found in that. If you, oh my gosh, if you need to cry, you know, for example, if you are angry, get angry, right? Angry can be so transformative. Anger doesn't have to be about being cruel, vindictive. Anger doesn't have to be about lashing out at others. It's okay to express anger. But if that anger even trans, or it um, evolves into to tears, right? That can often happen where we're so, so angry. And then all of a sudden we're crying because actually the anger represented a part of us that was saying there's a need that's not being met. It's not being met and you're crying out. So, oh my gosh, this is indeed a solar eclipse that's going to pack a punch when it comes to our healing, really. Right, so what I also want to mention, if this slide, yep, is the square to Ceres. So notice here that Ceres is in Capricorn at 17 degrees. Okay, so this, there's a strong need to protect what you have accomplished and what you have achieved over a long period of time. Ceres is so much about our attachment. Ceres can actually show us our attachment style. So can the moon, naturally. But yeah, Ceres can also play a role. So in the case of Ceres being in Capricorn, this is about our attachments to success, to purpose. But naturally, because this is a square, there's tension present. There's frustration present. But this is also about finding a way through the uncomfortability, finding a way through any sort of difficult emotions that come up. And this is then showcasing how we can overcome, right? Capricorn is so much about overcoming. It's about looking at, okay, this is an obstacle. This is a delay or some issue in my way. How can I address this? So it's about being able to address any sort of frustrations that we feel that are holding us back when it comes to our purpose, when it comes to achieving what we want. But I think also this speaks to the sensitivity stuff. As I was previously mentioned, as I previously mentioned, maybe relating to trying not to overcompensate so much. So how well are we looking after ourselves, right? The series can also look at how we do uh, take care of ourselves so and the moon as well I just want to say but is our worth fine then in what we produce maybe it's about questioning this stuff you know is it is it kind of for example is it worth getting into these arguments or these debates and these disagreements with people who really only identify with materials and with their successes and with what they have like is it really is it worth it um and does it maybe make you feel a bit like oh I'm not sure of myself because it seems to be that this is what matters all the material stuff so our emotions could very well be heightened I think um with respect to these types of situations um and yeah it's not it's not the most gentle combination, this, right? Capricorn and Aries, it's not the most gentle combination. It could just feel like we're butting heads um, in, in a lot of ways. And maybe I think this butting heads is to do with how attached we are to a certain role, to a certain identity, to a certain path that we're on. Okay, so... Mars is also going to be conjunct Saturn. And then there will be sextiles to Jupiter and Uranus. A couple of things, which is interesting when we connect it all together. Saturn in Pisces. So Saturn is the dispositor of Ceres. So Saturn is conjunct Mars, but then Mars is the dispositor of the eclipse, right? So there's this sort of union, which is going to grow stronger and they're going to be exact on the 10th of April, but there's a union between the ruling planets of the square, right? So what does this tell us, right? So we're, we're thinking about the frustrations and the, ah, this is about gentle. Can we have a gentle touch? Can we practice self-compassion? 
can we hold space for empathy? Can we hold space for kindness, for forgiveness? And I'm not necessarily saying about, oh, you know, forgiving all the people who've wronged you. Da, 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 da. No, I'm more so talking about self, right? We're bringing it back to self. We're bringing it back to how can you hold space for your emotions during this eclipse? And perhaps having a creative outlet can be so healing. Maybe it can even help with the whole, oh, I just need to like let them know and push and insist. If there's any of that going on, perhaps we are reminded of the beauty that is creativity, art, focusing on our own inner world, trying to just soften, right? To soften and to maybe even appreciate that you can't change the past. You can't turn back time. But what you can do in the present is you can take actions which can change the course of events, which can change your future. And I also think that the actions that we make in the present have an impact on the past in a way because that could have changed your karma, if you will. But hey, this is also about our grief. This is about loss. This is about abandonment. Ceres looks at these things. So I think there is a grieving process at the same time for many people. And it's about considering which attachments in our lives are healthy which attachments support us and make us feel like we we can achieve. And I just want to say, in terms of, of grief, this isn't necessarily just about, you know, um, losing a loved one and, and actual death. I mean, grief can come in many forms. For example, grief could be the life that you wish you had, but you can't have anymore because of a separation, a divorce, or a child-related matter, for instance. And then with Mars being in Pisces, we are reminded of patience. We're reminded of the, the flowing of tides, flowing with the tides, trusting in the process. I mean, I think this is a solar eclipse that is going to bring a lot up to the surface. A lot is going to come to the surface and it's going to feel like we're so in it. Many of us are so in it, but spiritual values then are highlighted. I think the fact that Mars in Pisces can be so, so helpful and, and actually very grinding, <laughs> grinding. And I also think it'll help provide perspective, spiritual perspective. And this is about going within. Moving the body can be really helpful emotionally, spiritually, you know, maybe even getting outside, going for a walk, listening to music, again, you know, art, possibly some exercise, even with the moon being in Aries, people who have moon in Aries, an emotional need for natives with their moon in Aries is that of moving their body. It's to get, it's to release the energy. And if you're angry, as I've been trying to say, be angry, right? Our anger can, it can transform us during this time. It can be actually very, very healing. And with the sextiles then to Jupiter and Uranus, there's wisdom here about grounding practices. This is about patience and slowing down and just taking our time. Just pay attention, like take it in. I think whenever we can slow down during this time period, this, I feel, is whenever we're going to be able to recognize what is changing, how things are evolving bit by bit, and what decisions we want to make. How can we do what's best for us? Breathe. <laughs> breathe. <sighs> I, I said breathe in and breathe out because I just think breathing exercises could be very, very helpful. Very helpful. But also... I think we're reminded that so many mysteries are unfolding in the background, but we just can't see them yet, right? We just, we can't see. 
Pisces is so much about the unknown of things that haven't actually actually happened yet, doors that have not yet opened and presented themselves to us. So it is just important to be in that space of mystery. Let yourself be surprised <laughs> with Uranus being a part of it as well, right? Let yourself be surprised. And <clears throat> it's also about being strong, I think, being strong and being victorious uh, during this eclipse. Right. Now we also have Mercury retrograde in Aries and then Venus and the North Node in Aries. So Venus is the dispositor of the Taurus placements, also being in Aries. So there's a strong desire to accomplish, to win, to achieve <laughs> during this eclipse. Certain money moves, possibly relationship moves, self-worth moves, creativity moves. Oof. And with the Aristellium, all of this stuff that I mentioned, it's very much about being active, adventurous, aggressive, right? Loud, fierce, <laughs> right? powerful possibly taking on a new financial venture, passionate about the next financial, creative or relationship step, getting what we desire or having this whew about us, this oof about us to want to get what we desire, this excitement, this enthusiasm, this passion. Now with Mercury retrograde, it's also about evaluating. So evaluating the process we have made so far <laughs> within our Aries house. Of course, um, the pre-shadow period began from the 18th of March. So we're in the pre-shadow period still. That's going to take us up to the 1st of April. And then from the 1st until the 25th of April, that's going to be the retrograde. And then after that, there will be a post-shadow period. And that's when we're going to really, okay, mull things over. But yeah, during the solar eclipse then, oh, we're going to be in full swing of the Mercury retrograde. So this, I feel, is also why it's important to slow down, right? There are enterprising moves happening it's still about, okay, there is forward moving movement going on with, with Aries. There's still all these placements in Aries, but our mind, okay, Mercury rules the mind. Our mindset is that of, okay, let me think, let me think, let me go over that. Just, just take a beat. As I was saying earlier, pause, find par in the pause. And lastly, we have Venus square series and then sextile Pluto. Right. I'm actually going to start from the Venus sextile Pluto part. Actually, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. Venus is square Vesta in Cancer, right? So Vesta is entering Cancer on the 31st of March. And do you remember we had a we had a bit of a retrograde of Vesta um, in Cancer? And that was around, I think it was before Christmas, before, before Christmas time, because we did have um, a bit of the Vesta retrograde in Gemini as well. Still, with this aspect, perhaps we're defensive, a little bit defensive, a little bit crabby, a little bit moody about our family, about our home, about our property, about our feelings, okay? Feeling sympathetic as well about those that we love those that we support and we care about. Mm. This is a, an eclipse, I think, that's going to showcase and, and um, bring up who are the people in our lives that we do care about and that we want in our lives and that we want to show up for, you know, in this supportive way. But you see, the other thing is we can feel hell. We can feel it when we're being held back. Or we can feel it when it feels like we're being held back, <laughs> right? This could be where, for example, we're noticing how much we have outgrown a situation. We've outgrown a relationship, maybe. And we want to move forward. We want to spread our wings, take on something else. But there's the, the part that's bringing it back, right? The, the people who are like, no, no, attach, attach, attach. It's that whole thing of um, the, you know, with the bucket and there's loads of crabs in the bucket 
and one of the crabs tries to climb out of the bucket and then all the other crabs pull it back in. This is the type of energy we're working with a bit. Okay. <laughs> um, so we could get kind of frustrated at people who do this or if, if it feels, if it feels like this is happening. Okay. So yeah, just keep that in mind. And also there's going to be a huge focus on nurturing matters challenged by our eagerness to win. Okay. So for example, this could be certain, um, certain projects, people, situations that we're nurturing, that we've been taking care of. But now that that's actually going to be challenged by a different path of ours, by our eagerness to want something else, to want something new. Mm. So yeah, a bit emotional. You know, some of us could very well be saying, right, goodbye. And that's not a bad, that's not a, a I'm not making this out to be like this big major whoo thing. It, it could just be a matter of, you know, you're not going to see someone for a while or you're leaving a particular position behind and there's some nostalgia in that or you're being sentimental. Maybe sentimental feelings are just felt around this solar eclipse as well when we consider, oh, this is what I want now. But, oh, the past, the past, the past, right? It's, yes, it's it's holding space for those feelings as well, I think. And then we also noticed that Venus is sextile Pluto. Oh, oh, we're going to feel very intensely and passionately about the people that we do value and love. But hey, we're also going to feel very passionately about the people that were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I trusted you for all this time. What was I thinking? Bye. <laughs> You know? So, yeah, it, it, there's there's passion available either way, right? Whether this be as a way to experience keep, uh, great depth and intimacy and pleasure, or where this is about us physically removing ourselves and recognizing that we want something else and we want something new. Right. We're going to move on to your horoscopes now. Thank you for being here. We're going to um, just, I'm just going to look at your comments quickly. Hello to forever. Hi, misbehaving. Welcome. Um, Hello, Anhidi. Anhidi, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Um, I'm so sorry that you almost did. I hope I'm not sure if uh, like how to respond to that because in ter terms of the seriousness of that, um. But I I do hope that you're feeling better now. It's very very scary. Hello Nicole, welcome to you. Hi Brianna. Hi. It's unsolicited advice. It'll make you feel better. <laughs> Brianna. Hello Jason. Hi. Hello. Yes, happy, yes, happy eclipse season, everyone. Hey, thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Right, we're going to get into your horoscopes now, and I'm not going to be able to look at your comments while I'm doing this. But yeah, thank you for, for tuning in, everybody. Let's do it. Let's do it tonight. I'm just getting my timestamps available, getting them ready. Um, right, so Aries, we're going to start off with you. Aries. All right, so there's going to be a common theme for every single sign. And the common theme is going to be about this bundle shape. So the bundle shape to describe this, there's great focus, right? There's great focus. There's great concentration when it comes to the bundle shape. And it's about accomplishment and having this tunnel vision and being very enterprising. So in your case, Aries, there seems to be this, this tunnel vision going on when it comes to your path, your next chapters, your next stages, what you want out of life, right? Because, hey, this is your eclipse, okay? This is all about you, <laughs> you. And I think... This is very much about leadership and 
how you wish to be a leader in a whole new way. But hey, this leadership that I talk about, it's also tied in with pretty scary emotions, like emotions that may be quite confronting as well. And the healing process that is going to happen, I think for many Aries, there is this this push that you feel. There is this driving forward focus that you're experiencing, but it's also about holding space for being like sensitive and just, yeah, showcasing some type of sensitivity toward any pains, aches, um, any, even if there are fears coming up, right? Fear, self-doubts of failure, um, fear, self-doubts about the next step. It's like, oh my gosh, what if, what if, what if? I think it's still about having this ability to, to drive forward anyway, to carry it through. Now, what we also want to just be mindful of is the fact that with the bundle shape, other parts of the chart can be neglected or can feel quite neglected. So, you know, maybe for you, Aries, it's just being mindful about how it is that you show up within relationships. So for instance, yes, okay, it could very well be that Aries, you feel ready, right? You feel geared up, you feel ready to take the next step when it comes to your path, your aims, your ambitions, your goals, what you want out of life any changes you want to make to your identity, so on and so forth. But I think the caution part is just about how swiftly, how quickly, how powerfully you do that. Let's be real here, Aries. You can have the tendency of burning your bridges, right? Where you can you can be impulsive to a fault, where it's like, ah, oh, I have this idea. I want to do it. I'm going to execute it. And you do. And hey, we all respect you for that too. I love it. I love that about Aries. But with the energies, the way they are, I just think that just be mindful because I think that way of handling things could very well backfire on you and you could just be left with a way bigger mess. And do you really want to clean up that mess, Aries? Do you really? Would you not rather sort of try and balance out the part of you that wants to move forward with a little bit of okay, I'm going to think it through. Okay, I'm actually going to feed when it comes to certain matters. I'm not I'm not going to go in all guns blazing like, oh, 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 right? It's just more about, okay, right. I'm going to come at it from a more calm place. But hey, this is the other thing. Mars, which is the dispositor of the eclipse, that's in Pisces in your 12th house. So if anything, Aries, <laughs> Aries, yes, this is a very goal oriented time for you and you're making those moves, you're making those plans, but it's also about taking time to contemplate, meditate if you can, reflect on your actions, reflect on the next steps you're making and have fun with it, right? Being in this place of solitude for you during this eclipse can actually be really healing and cleansing and purifying. And it can even be a time of excitement, right? <laughs> Where you're doing all of these really creative, artistic things behind the scenes. And it's just going with that, going with the flow a little bit and invite, invite this energy, welcome it, embrace it even. And the other thing just to mention as well, Mars is your chart ruler, right? So Mars is the chart ruler and it is indicating that it's about having this time to process your energy levels a lot and to even reflect on what your motivations are. Maybe this is a good solar eclipse to really consider what are my intentions? What do you really, 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 what do I want? Like, you know, it, you probably already do know what you want because you're like that, but it's just taking a pause, a time period to, okay, I, I know that, but maybe there's more to this. Maybe there's more I can pull from this information, right? Maybe all the, the bigger picture, all the perspectives have not been fully grasped quite yet. And two days after the eclipse, 
Mars and Saturn are going to conjunct, ushering in a new cycle, right? A new two-year cycle between Saturn and Mars. And this cycle for you is going to be this new ambitious success and dedication cycle to do with spiritual responsibility, to do with trust, boundaries, emotional maturity, to do with going within, right? I think this is the type of cycle, Aries, that's going to set you up for a very long time in terms of how it is that you deal with the outside world. It's going to really help you navigate um, how it is that you do react with others, how you react within your life and how you can maybe have more of a, a spiritual awareness regarding how you react. And just one more thing, of course, for you is Mercury is retrograde in your sign. So all the more reason to <laughs> just take some time to, to reflect, to, to, to contemplate, you know, what is it about the next step? Again, I just think that all the information that, that you think you have, it's, it's not quite there yet. Aries, I say this with love, but you can be like this. You can sort of have this attitude of, well, hey, you know, I learned this new thing and I want to be an expert overnight. Okay. Oh, this is new information. Oh, I'm going to take action on it straight away. Okay. Mercury retrograde is going to help you in so many ways to go, okay, I've got that information, but there's, there's more. There's more to this, isn't there? And oh my goodness, when you have all the facts, all the, the, the data, the information that you need about a new plan, about a new ambition, about a new way of um, viewing the world, whatever have you, you're going to be prepped. You're going to be prepped. Mars as well. Mars is going to be entering your sign. Mm -mm -mm. End of March? No, end of April. My, my apologies. Around the end of April. So that is certainly going to usher in a whole new selfish sort of cycle, um, which you're going to be prepared for because you'll have gathered all of the necessary information that you need during the Mercury retrograde. Still, of course, with it being an eclipse, it's still about significant new chapters, significant new intentions. Okay, so moving on to Taurus. Just see. So, Taurus. All right. <clears throat> so, what I've been saying here, Taurus, is that there is a bundle chart shape happening. And the bundle chart shape signifies great focus, great concentration. And it can feel like we can accomplish anything. There's remarkable things that can happen. So in your case, there is a lot of this energy being derived into your spiritual practices, behind the scenes activity, things that you're working on when you're alone, even plans that you're setting, goals that you're setting behind the scenes. This is indeed a, a process for many of you tourists to, to just go over, all right, well, what is, what is the next step for me? What do I want? How do I envision things to go? And reflecting on such matters through a lens of self and through a lens of even healing yourself, right? There is that Chiron influence too. So even healing to do with anger to do with times when you didn't assert yourself or stand up for yourself and <clears throat> I also think that at the same time there can be this sort of tunnel vision process right this is what I've also said to Aries there can be the, the tunnel vision with all the, the bundle um and you know it just could be that things are not so clear right now for your Taurus things are a bit foggy okay you know maybe this is a, a case of for a few Tory Torians, you're in a place of going through a major life transition that hasn't been fully developed yet and hasn't been fully presented yet. 
to the world, perhaps because you're not even quite sure. There's a lot of, I would say a lot of question marks for many tourists at the moment. Um, I would say unknown, right? There, there's the unknown quality to having all of these planets in, in the, the 12th house. And we want to even think about how Venus, which is your chart ruler, Venus is in Aries. So this is also then about going over your finances, going over even matters related to your body, right? Your physical body. And this could be even about your health, your well-being, your energy levels. Do you feel fatigued during this eclipse, even around this time period? Is there something about really having to honor how you're feeling on a physical level? And maybe this is even about some certain goals that you're wanting to put in place to do with your physical body. Um, and I just mean this through a lens of being energetic and um, feeling good, right? Feeling, feeling good about yourself. This could even be something to do with your diet, nutrition, um, fitness, your mental health as well could be a big thing for you Taurus during this time. Your hygiene could be another thing. Um, also just beauty, right? Beauty in terms of, okay, what is your style? Is there something that you're wanting to change? Have you outgrown a previous version of yourself? But all of this is to say that these things are happening more so out of the public eye, <laughs> right? This is more about going into your own space, being in solitude, etc. Now, what I also want to mention is how, so we think about how Mars, which is the dispositor of all of the Aries energy, that is in Pisces for you. So with the dispositor of all the Aries energy being in the 11th house, <clears throat> I think that there's a lot that's happening to do with friendships, groups, teams, and considering, okay, what do you want from them? Perhaps a lot of the, the reflection that's going on behind the scenes is to do with friendship stuff. Maybe thinking about, oh, certain ways that you're being treated or certain emotional stuff that's coming to the surface things maybe even tied to karma, tied to the past that actually hasn't been addressed yet or fully processed yet. And maybe this is also about the wisdom that you are gaining from certain groups and friends and maybe even being courageous, right? Being somewhat bold and courageous about what you want from friendships, what you want from certain groups and networks and clubs, etc. And, you know, there could even be an element of this where you feel so strongly about standing up for a certain spiritual cause or for a cause related to helping others, being of service to others, right? Because that Pisces part of you is so, can be so empathetic and compassionate toward people who, you know, are maybe struggling or they've they've been shut out from society and you're like, but that's not fair. So there could be a lot even to do with injustice perhaps coming up for many Torians around this eclipse. So there is that. But I also want to mention that Mars and Saturn are going to conjunct on the 10th of April. So just two days after this eclipse happens, a new cycle is going to be ushered in within your Pisces house. And that's going to be a two year cycle so what this is suggesting is that new plans are being put in place, right? Um, new plans will be unfolding to do with your ambitions and successes, right? And how such matters are related to organizations, companies, groups, teams, clubs, etc. But it's also then about your own personal responsibility, your own spiritual responsibility within these matters. And the sort of changes that you wish to see when it comes to them as well, right? The differences that you wish to see within certain organizations, for instance. And this within itself is so much about trust. It's about having trust, having faith, just 
really trusting in, in the process that things are going to play out how they're going to play out and there's only so much that you can that you can essentially control Taurus and the last thing then is the Mercury retrograde so that's going to be in the 12th house for you as well during the solar eclipse so even more reason to go um, into those places of solitude hey maybe for many Torians, it's about reading it's about learning something new a new skill a new interest out of the public eye maybe it's about doing some journaling or maybe it's about trying to meditate if you can that is if your thought that's you know provided your thoughts aren't going like a million miles a minute but um yeah meditation or maybe even just paying attention to what your dreams say you know your dreams could maybe be very very clear in terms of leadership and passions and ambitions and so on Taurus so yeah just taking taking some time for you in in this way okay so moving on to Gemini <clears throat> radio Gemini what we see here for you Gemini is okay there is a bundle chart shape happening and I want to mention about the bundle chart shape that there is great focus and concentration we can feel like we can accomplish anything it can be quite a remarkable um time so in your case it's almost as if you can achieve really what you put your mind to within networks within groups within teams this is about being a trailblazer uh, within groups this is about putting your own mark on things and staying true to what you want and what you're about within group dynamics and I also think this is showcasing some tunnel vision right so I've been saying this for other signs but there's the tunnel vision of just focusing so heavily on the success or the ambitions and the goals about I really want this this is the direction that I'm on with respect to my organizations and my teams even my non-conforming ideas right this could be very innovative actually for many Gemini right there are innovative moves occurring and this within itself can be extremely enterprising as well and to even add to this Mercury is your chart ruler so Mercury is retrograde in Aries in the 11th house for you so I think during this time and just even during Mercury retrograde in general from the 1st until the 25th of April for many Gemini I think what you'll be doing is you'll be going over a bit of a maybe like a business plan or going over your innovative ideas right your creativity even just your your wants essentially to do with the future right having these 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 ideas these creative sparks and seeing as well what makes you stand out from the crowd what makes you unique right how do you stand out from the rest how do you stand out from your competitors for instance but at the same time what is it about your groups and your teams that is that it that uh, stands out what is it about a collective situation that is quite unique and I think this could be where you can recognize those gifts and those talents a bit especially with Venus also being in the 11th house right and even being very likable and enjoyable to be around particularly with Venus in your 11th house people wanting to give to you to want to be around you to want to work with you so a lot of action let's just say this a lot of action happening um within communities and teams and hey you know what Gemini maybe you wouldn't have it any other way maybe this is quite um, exciting and it's mentally stimulating and you're engaged quite a bit it's like oh you know there's the curiosity and there's the passion there and the enthusiasm but hey uh I still want to mention when it comes to the bundle that things can just be so tunnel vision and, and we can often sort of neglect other parts of the chart and of our lives and so you know maybe a part of this for you is to do with having some time off or um maybe thinking about a certain hobby that you have you know you can maybe you play piano or some sort of instrument or maybe you are you, you 
you're quite creative when it comes to certain hobbies and forms of enjoyment. And, but maybe such matters are being neglected a bit. So perhaps an element of just a bit of balance can be helpful. Or perhaps this is even just keeping in mind, okay, s slow down a little bit because all that Aries energy, as I've been saying throughout this video, all the Aries can be so, you know, pumped and ready to go and just, I want this, I want this, but still to balance that out with a bit of Libra can be useful in terms of, okay, have I thought about this? Have I thought about that? What can be helpful to me maybe when it comes to other people and my relationships? Right. So let's also mention for you, Gemini, that so Mars, the dispositor of all of the Aries that is in Pisces in the 10th house for you. So with the dispositor being in the 10th house, I can't help but think that this, all the community stuff, the, the group team stuff is so much about how you are seen within the public sphere. It's to do with your reputation it's to do with being taken seriously i think i think there is a level of seriousness because saturn is also conjunct mars but i think as well it's about setting yourself up for the long haul right that's another thing about this conjunction which i mentioned in previous signs so there's going to be a conjunction between saturn and mars on the 10th of april so that conjunction is you know it's a it starts a two-year cycle but because Saturn's a part of it, it is about the long haul, it's about the future. So making these moves, right? Making moves within your professional life, when it comes to your career, when it comes to your life's work, your life's mission, also a very big temp house thing. But being then taken seriously for such matters and being known as someone of stature, right? Of someone who knows what you're talking about, you're a professional, right? These are things I think that you're really striving for and that you want. So it's, it's that, it's that um, integrity that you're going to have about yourself. It's, it's that belief that you're going to have in yourself, uh, the confidence that's going to come across. But of course, with this being a conjunction in Pisces, there's an element of trust and emotional maturity and about being spiritually responsible on a public forum, right? Spiritually responsible within your chosen profession, for instance. Um, so yes, and just in general, you know, with this being an eclipse, it's oh, it's it's powerful, it's energetically strong. This is about the significant new chapters happening within your area of life that you know it rules the things like friendships, teams, non-conforming ideas your hopes and wishes for the future. And yeah, thinking about how these things are tied to being enterprising. They're tied to being a leader. Okay, so we're moving on to Cancer next. Cancer. Let's do this, Cancer. Right. Whoo, Cancer. There's a lot happening for you in your 10th house. Very significant indeed. So what I've been talking about is this bundle shape and the bundle shape is very strong. There's a focus, there's a concentration and it can feel like we can accomplish remarkable things. Now, of course, I do want to say that the bundle shape is more than the, the airy stuff that I have been talking about. It also involves the Pisces, the Taurus, a bit of that Aquarius energy, but I think because there is a stellium in Aries, it's extra it's extra focused on these areas. So for you, Cancer, I think that there are big moves and transitions and doors opening, significant doors opening. What, when it comes to your position in the world, your title, right? And I mean this in terms of a job title, your reputation, what you're known for. Cancer is the sign that comes to be known for its passions for its drive for its motivations its willpower cancers become known as people who are leaders they can lead 
and lead well. <laughs> um, so there is that. So do consider how such leadership moves are going to be unfolding very strongly for you when it comes to your career, your life's path, your purpose. Thinking as well um, here about how there's this tunnel vision, right? There can be what feels like a tunnel vision of just being so in it, so concentrated and focused. And, 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 you know, with that, that can be powerful. It can be used to your benefits. For, so, for example, this, this could look like you really going after a new exciting position and you stopping at nothing than, than just focusing on that. And you just want to make it happen so badly. Even Moon, which is your chart ruler, that is in it's in Aries right it's the solar total solar eclipse in Aries and the moon then being the ruler is extra strong in this regard so yeah there is that that energetic fierceness focus and so on but I think at the same time with the tunnel vision can come parts where you neglect other areas so you could for example be neglecting family stuff home stuff um, emotional security stuff, you know, it could be where you feel like you're fighting so, so hard to want to win, to want to gain, to want to accomplish when it comes to uh, your successes and your achievements. It's like, yes, yes, yes. I want this. I want this. But it's also a question of, okay, well, are you also nurturing your relationships? Are you nurturing your family, especially is there this tender love and care? You know, is there enough room for softness and gentleness? Is there balance, right? Is there some type of, of harmony in this regard? It just, you know, it's, <clears throat> excuse me, when it comes to the nodes, right? It's not about just following the North node and that's it, right? It's, it's also about being able to carry something then back and forward, right? There's this, this, back and forward process like that that seesaw the balance and it's almost as if the the process of following the north node can be used to strengthen us to strengthen our relationships with the south node being in libra so for you it's still recognizing and keeping in mind home stuff uh so i do want to say <laughs> so i want to say that and <clears throat> what i further want to mention for you is the dispositor of all of the Aries, that's in the ninth house. So I think that the amount of hours, work, dedication, determination, all that stuff, the amount of things that you're putting in to this arena related to success and achievement and purpose and career and all of the rest of it, your reputation, being known, what you're known for, etc. All of it has to do with wanting to further yourself, right? Wanting to improve, wanting to gain more, more wisdom, more knowledge, um, taking on more training. Just to me, it's as if cancer, you really want to level up, right? You really want to level up in terms of your understanding of things. It's, yeah, I think it's more about understanding and it's more as well about, your aspirations and the sort of goals you have in this way because of course Mars can look at our goals and the other thing I want to mention of course is travel right long distance travel I mean for example this could be where you're putting in so much work because you're trying to save up for this remarkable trip that you really want to go on and you really want to dedicate yourself to maybe even relocating, right? Moving, possibly moving house. There could be a house situation that is, is really very much on your mind, right? And you feel oh so passionate, so inspired to want to make things happen. But I also want to then mention is what I also want to mention is Mars will conjunct Saturn on the 10th of April. So two days after this eclipse, there will be that conjunction. So a new cycle is actually being ushered in within your Pisces house here, Cancer. And that's going to be about two years. So this is a cycle to do with travel, uh, to do with higher learning, to do <laughs> with um, exploring things outside of your comfort zone. 
And it's also about being somewhat disciplined when it comes to these matters, right? Having this spiritual awareness, knowing when to slow down, knowing when to go within. This is about showing self-control. This is about self-mastery and yeah, being disciplined about um, the future, right? The future goals that you have. And again, it is about things like travel, things like discovery. Um, even this could be a legal matter, right? This this could be a legal matter that comes up and this new cycle ushers in, okay, well, how am I going to address that legal matter in a responsible, respectable way? How am I going to do that? And it's not about, oh, I'm going to try and avoid that or, oh, you know, it's no, no, no. Saturn teaches us, <laughs> Saturn teaches us what you cannot get away with. That even in Pisces, it's so much about you can't be sneaky. Yeah. You know, so just address the hard stuff, get out of the way. It's done, right? And it could take a while. It could take a while to address these legal concerns that come up, but it is about that consistency with Saturn, of course. <laughs> and you know, it could even be related to teaching, to sharing being a mentor, being a coach of some kind, cancer, right? So what types of services do you wish to offer in this regard? Perhaps it's linked to spirituality, your creativity, art, so on and so forth. But hey, the last thing I want to mention is the Mercury retrograde. So that is happening in your 10th house. So indeed, during Mercury retrograde around this eclipse, it's still about just taking some time to reflect on, okay, what are my what am I building? What, uh, what am I currently working on? Um, and how can I even have certain discussions with bosses and managers about such matters, right? Maybe there's certain information that comes back up past conversations, an interview that you once had, and whoop, here we go. There's something about that interview, that interview that's coming back around, or there's something about coworker relationships that's coming up and you have to address it. So how it is that you're communicating in this way. Um, and how these matters are also tied in with your successes and what you wish to achieve in the future. Right, so we're moving on to Leo now. Leo, so I have been talking about this bundle. There is a bundle shape happening in the sky and what this essentially means is that there's just so much concentration and so much focus happening within the bundle. Now, there is the stellium in Aries and there's just so much Aries energy. And for you, Leo, I think that there is an eagerness, oh, a fierceness to want to accomplish, to want to achieve remarkable things when it comes to what? Broadcasting, publishing, teaching, mentoring, coaching, traveling, Oh, Leo, you're, I think many Leos are on fire just thinking about, oh, I want to go here. I want to go there. Possibly even taking a significant trip, right? An overseas trip <laughs> around this eclipse. And there's this sense of freedom, right? There's this sense of independence, right? Aries is so much about independence and our identity. And oh, this is your chart ruler being the sun, Leo. So the sun being in Aries during Aries season, where of course the sun is exalted, right? This has something to say about how you are going to feel more fulfilled, right? But you're going to feel more fulfilled when you're aligned with following your passions, with doing what is creative, when you're aligned with something that just speaks to your heart and it speaks to your soul. Oh, this is such a soulful, heartfelt time for Leo's. Oh, oh, right? <laughs> And I just kind of think a lot of this is to do with this amazing trip, or perhaps it's to do with this amazing course, right? A course that you want to publish, um, something that you want to present on a on a forum, and maybe some guidance that you give to others, right? Oh, Leo, Leo, Leo. How exciting, how fun, how playful. This is a very magnetic time. No, I, naturally, the Chiron, there is the Chiron influence, right? There is that Chiron influence. And um, so 
there's still healing happening, right? And that's the same when it comes to Cancer and Gemini, there's still the healing and there's still the processing of certain wounds, like, like leadership wounds, being afraid of maybe being rejected. Oh, what are they going to think of me? Are they going to judge me? Um, I'm doubting myself right now, uh, right? So this, I feel, when we bring in, in the sun and the sun being exalted in Aries, there's so much about confidence coming through for many people. And I think a lot of it is related back to well, if you're not going to start, how will you know, you know, how would you know? So maybe in your case, Leo, it's about a new start to do with broadcasting or publishing or travel. And then you realize, hey, it wasn't as scary as I thought it would be. Actually, I've, I've had an amazing time, right? Even on reflection, when we consider going back to cancer, right, this stuff that could the stuff that I just mentioned that could very well be related to managers and bosses and taking a next step when it comes to your career path the uh, next step that's like I don't know if I've got the skills if I've got the credentials right so proving or, or more so showing up showing up is the first step yes and to even think about Gemini, I mean, a lot of the stuff to do with the fears and rejections and stuff like this, self-doubt, I think a lot of that has to do with communities and how you show up as a community member as well. So yeah, I wanted to just add that. But for you, Leo, oh, the, the unfolding here that's been happening with respect to your identity and courage, right? So this is so much about being courageous, being bold, being daring, taking that risk. Now, we also want to think about how with the South Node being in Libra, there is, okay, when it comes to the all this Aries energy, it's just such a focus and it can be enterprising, yes, but there's the tunnel vision. So do keep in mind just with the South Node being in Libra, okay, balance a little bit, balance within discussions, balancing your own mind and heart even, or just balancing your own sort of inner world in this way when it comes to communication, okay? Find power in the pause. Take a beat, right? It could be where you're feeling perhaps very excited or very nervous about something, but the South Node in Libra is reminding you to just sort of breathe, right? Just to breathe, center yourself a bit, um, and to maybe even recognize that there's a lot of information that isn't yet that hasn't yet been presented yet. And there's so much as well that you don't know quite yet. And maybe as well, this ties in with Mars. So Mars being the dispositor of all of that Aries energy, that's in the eighth house. So for you, Leo, it is about, okay, embrace the unknown. Embrace <laughs> embrace the mysteries of life right now because, hey, you know what? You may, it could go a certain way. It could, could go a completely different way. And these things that I mentioned are related to the travel stuff, related to the publishing stuff, the education stuff, possibly even legal matters, lawful stuff. Like I was mentioning a moment ago with cancer because with Mars being in the ninth for them. But yeah, I think the unconscious has so much to tell you about what's trying to be pushed through and maybe as well this is tied to your dreams right pay attention to your dreams what's been unfolding there for you what signals what synchronicities it could just be for many leos during this time you're just seeing it all it's like bam 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 you know and it's it's excel it's exciting and it's accelerating but you know maybe you feel very spiritually aligned in this way or maybe you know, things are extra clear, right? There's those psychic tendencies coming up that are so potent and you can, you can like see the, the defined kind of messages in your mind. And you can even have the ability to visualize really, really well during this time, Leo. And the other thing about it is there is the Saturn conjunct Mars. So there's that conjunction which will happen on the 10th of April, just a couple of days after the solar eclipse. So a new cycle is being ushered in within your eighth house, Leo, and it's a two-year cycle or so, but this is then about, okay, how have you been maturing when it comes to the spiritual stuff? How have you been taking responsibility for your own unconscious in this way, right? In terms of, okay, things have been coming through and you can recognize them and take responsibility for them. Maybe as well, this is about your fears coming to the surface. What's holding you back? What's limiting you? 
And this is about having strength. This is about being really brave in the face of all of it and to trust, like to trust in the process. This trust in the process could even be related to joint finances, you know, some sort of um, debt situation or a shared resource situation so thinking about sharing with a partner for example but indeed there is great emotional maturity that is going to unfold as time goes on throughout this cycle for you and the last thing I want to mention is oh and by the way the stuff that I said to do with the shared resources um and debt and so on that's about the long haul, right? That is about being consistent. That's about being disciplined. Just, yeah, remembering that to do with Saturn. Thinking about the long haul. And with the last thing then, Mercury. Mercury is retrograde in the ninth house there for you uh, from the 1st until the 25th of April. And so around this eclipse, it's about, okay, perhaps conversations that you have with others can trigger new ideas or can help you revisit old ideas which maybe you didn't really have clarity about before but just pay attention because you'd be surprised by how you know being in a certain course a certain practice a training program how such matters can really trigger these creative ideas for you and help innovate things for you in a whole new way Okay, so Virgo, we're moving on to Virgo now. All right, Virgo, so we have been talking about this bundle. And the bundle shape is, it represents great focus and concentration. And it can feel like we can accomplish anything. <laughs> so for you, most of this energy is located in the eighth house. Naturally, this is where the eclipse is happening, right? So the eclipse is happening in your eighth house. <clears throat> so what can we expect for you? <coughs> Sorry, my throat. Uh, so what can we expect for you? Significant new chapters and new beginnings to do with intimacy, trust, commitment, emotional bonding. Oof. But hey, I think that with so much of this energy being in Aries, there is this like fierceness going on. It's a never turn back type of energy. It's the type of energy that says, I am ready to transform and I'm willing to let the previous version of myself completely die, right? Virgo, <clears throat> Virgo, you are shedding. You are shedding old narratives, old stories, old versions of yourself that just don't, this just don't fit anymore, right? And maybe a part of it, Virgo as well, is anger could very well come up. Anger could come up to the surface and perhaps the anger is to do with, I can't believe I tolerated that for so long. Or I can't believe that those things happened and I didn't stand up for myself what was I thinking? So mm, Virgo, you are indeed transforming in oh, magnetic, incredible ways when it comes to leadership, driving forward, staying true to who you are, being a trailblazer, <laughs> maybe even being a trailblazer when it comes to shared resources and finances, and just handling those management matters, those financial matters, right? Even thinking about how you manage other people's resources and time, etc. But at the same time, recognizing what isn't yours and what you no longer wish to put up with and what no longer serves you, Virgo. Let's think of it like this. Mercury, which is your chart ruler, that is retrograde during this eclipse, so Mercury retrograde in the eighth house, I feel is uh, it's going to be a time where you're really going to reflect upon, okay, what is trust to me? What does it mean to trust someone? What does it mean to be vulnerable with someone? What does it mean to really open up and share my heart and to let people into my life? Who is who is deserving of that information actually? And what 
when have I shared my private world and my intimate moments with people who quite honestly didn't really deserve it and they didn't really respect it, right? I think you're facing a lot of these things, you know? I think there's a great deal of clarity as well in terms of intimacy and what you want, right? What you want out of intimate relationships and even about that likability. Do you like certain qualities? What do you like in terms of intimacy and SEX and so on, right? Because Venus is also there <laughs> in the eighth house too. I just, just wanted to say that. Huh, yeah. And with Chiron as well being a part of this eclipse, is it going to sting? Is it going to be painful? Is it going to hurt whenever you do recognize that you've outgrown a previous version of yourself? Probably. <laughs> Probably it's going to hurt. It's. I think what can happen is it, it's the thing of, oh no, but I'm comfortable this way. Oh, but things aren't going to be the same. And oh, what if, what if, what if, what if, right? Even Mercury being your chart ruler, that's retrograde. And Virgo, you, oh, you can be a worrisome sign. You can be a worry wart, right? You can make up these scenarios in your head that haven't even happened yet that pr probably will never happen, right? But those scenarios in your head, you, let, you can let them rule your life and rule your decision making. So, hey, this is an eclipse, and I'm just being straight with you here, Virgo. This is an eclipse that's going to help you transform when it comes to this mindset, this sort of mentality, right? Of going to the worst case scenario, maybe because it's like, oh, it's going to protect me, it's going to protect me. But is it? Is it really? Or is it just going to hurt you? Does it just hurt you really? Hmm. So I just, I wonder. These are just questions I'm, I'm, I'm placing towards you, uh, Virgo. And I'm saying them with love. I'm asking with love. And I also feel the need to mention, fear Virgo, when it comes to this stuff, there can be a part of it where you're so like, ah, right? Oh my gosh, Virgo, like, you can, you can obsess about things, right? You can obsess about past traumas, past issues. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this. I'm not saying that. I think if anything, this is also an eclipse that's going to highlight the healing process and all of this and how it's good to be sensitive. It's good to be gentle with yourself. But if you're doing it to such an extent that you're not making time for other things, you know, maybe you're not considering other pleasures, other interests, other relationships, right? Because you're so caught up, right? And all the other stuff, maybe it's a good idea to, to just be cautious and to take a step back and think about, okay, well, what are my values? What are my values? What do I enjoy? What makes me feel comfortable? What makes me feel relaxed? And I think of anything with Libra being in your second house, Virgo, you value the ability to, okay, live a balanced life, to live a balanced life, a harmonious life. So I think there is a part of, okay, considering your lifestyle a, a great deal during this, this eclipse season. And hey, do you know what? By doing so, I think this is also about the shedding. I think this is also about transformation for you allowing for a previous version of yourself to die so that you can be reborn from the ashes and come out anew. And I think that this is a process, of course, it's not just going to be on the day, the solar eclipse on the 8th of um, April. It's a process. It's going to unfold, especially with Mercury still being retrograde until the 25th of April. Um, and then also I want to mention that Mars, the disposer of all of the 8th house stuff, that's in the 7th house. So the stuff that I'm talking about, you know, transforming or growing old versions of yourself, your identity, stuff like that. Oh, it's tied in with what? Partnerships, relationships, contracts, agreements, marriage, commitments, all these things. It's tied in with all of that. And I think the conjunction between Mars and Saturn on the 10th of April, right, two days after the solar eclipse. Oh, my goodness. Virgo, boundaries much? boundary much Virgo you're coming to a point in your life where you're saying hey no this is my boundary and that's it that's it I'm not moving it because you know what <laughs> oh 
Do you know what? I think, I think you're getting to this point, especially because with Neptune, right? Neptune has been in your seventh house since what? 2011? Yeah, 2011. Just had to kind of be like, was it definitely that day? But yes, Neptune has been in Pisces since 2011, right? So even collectively, we've all had this energy, right? Somewhere in our chart for you, Virgo, it's been in your seventh house of partnerships. And oh my goodness, the amount of people who have mistaken your kindness for weakness. Oh my goodness. The disrespect. <laughs> Virgo, you're coming to a point where it's like, I'm done with the disrespect. And you know what? I'm going to respect myself. And that respect is about your healthy boundaries. It's time, Virgo. It's time to absolutely welcome in a new process, a new cycle, which is going to be about two years or so, right? With From the 10th of April. But it's going to be a new process where it's so much about your own spiritual awareness, your emotional maturity, healthy boundaries, trust, trust about the next step in terms of relationships Virgo okay so we're moving on to Libra now Libra all right so Libra we have been talking about this bundle shape in the sky that's happening and so for you there's just so much of this focus so much of this concentration occurring in your seventh house and i mean of course the solar eclipse in the seventh house for you is ushering in new significant chapters new significant seeds are being planted when it comes to relationships partnerships collaboration cooperation okay and i think as well a part of this actually Libra, is looking more so at the role that you have played as an individual. And this is not about right or wrong, okay? This is about taking a good, honest, honest, right, Aries, an honest look about how events have unfolded when it comes to certain relationships that that you have, you're experiencing. And is it that you wish to lead in a new light? Is it that you wish to connect with different types of people, relate to different types of people who maybe more so align with what you want and what you actually desire then as, as an individual? Maybe as well, many of you Libras, you know, you're recognizing where your values are, where they lie um, within partnerships too. I mean, let's consider how the chart ruler, which is Venus, that is in Aries during the solar eclipse. So indeed, there's just, there's a lot to do with, um, there's a lot to do with partnership coming up and how such matters are tied in with your own path, self-discovery, your own identity. It could even be, for example, revisiting a certain uh, flame or spark or it considering um, your drive, your motivations, your willpower when it comes to relationship dynamics and with Chiron also being there Chiron can highlight a certain wound right it could be that by a particular person perhaps I mean it could be for example a certain person um no longer wishes to connect with you in the same way maybe a person is putting themselves first right this could be a partner um business even a business partner someone you're quite close to you know so by them putting themselves first this hurts you that's that's quite painful for you it's quite, it, it maybe even opens up old wounds for you right there's some sort of wound uh, to do with your identity and maybe even a wound res with respect to your previous rejection so there could be a lot of emotions uh, that come to the surface in this regard, if this is the case. Um, this could also be, uh, for instance, a particular agreement or contract that is actually very new, right? Something very new, but that within itself is scary and it's daunting. And it's, it's sort of like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready for this next step. Can I do this? Right. It could be related to a job, right? A job opportunity, for example, a business opportunity. Um, but yeah, Chiron can, you know, look at 
some sort of wound there or sensitivities there. But naturally, when it comes to Chiron, there's healing, right? As for every every um, Chiron placement that I've talked about so far, there's healing in it. There's integration in it. Um, it's about being wise and um, learning a great deal from the experiences. So yes, indeed, I think for many Libras, you're recognizing, okay, there is something new being ushered in to do with partnerships. Um, maybe even just the dynamic of a relationship is changing and that within itself is just, it's going to require some adjustments. That's it, adjustments. <laughs> Which, hey, with the South Node being in your sign, Libra, you're all about balance and you're all about being able to adjust very well. So you can make those adjustments happen. Um, but naturally, with this being a bundle shape, this can indicate how other parts of the chart are neglected. So in your case, it could be actually that whilst you're so caught up in all of the other, right? Others, 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 relationships, um, a part of you is neglecting yourself. A part of you is neglecting your own well-being. So maybe this is also where we're recognizing a bit of time to step back and consider what you need as an individual. Um, and also, let's think about how Mars, which is the dispositor of all of the Aries, that's in the sixth house. So that's very fitting. <laughs> that's very fitting when we consider the healing qualities and the health qualities and looking after yourself. So that I feel is going to highlight the importance of just taking care of your energy levels, recognizing when you need to slow down, when you need to rest, when you just need a moment maybe um, to manage your day to day. Is it that your cups are full? That's the question, right? Are your cups full? And the other thing about it naturally for you, Libra, is Saturn and Mars will conjunct on the 10th of April, so two days after this eclipse, and that's going to happen in your sixth house, right? So that's going to usher in the beginning of a new sort of two-year cycle within your house um, to do with your services, your work, your productivity, timekeeping, right? Timekeeping management in this way. So routine schedules, all the rest of it. So I think this is about getting yourself into a more disciplined way of viewing such matters, right? Knowing, okay, this is when the cutoff period is, or no, this is my boundary when it comes to my schedules and routines and that's it. But these things I mentioned are filtered through a lens of spirituality, spiritual responsibility um, and emotional maturity as well and then the last thing of course for you is mercury retrograde that's also happening in the seventh so hmm, the stuff to do with possible <laughs> contracts agreements business deals all the rest of it that i just mentioned mercury's retrograde okay so that is the whole thing it's just hey it's not necessarily about okay don't don't sign your name on that line right it's just more about just give it some thought right? Just give it some thought. Read the fine print. Make sure that things are done correctly, okay? Make sure that things are updated. Records, files, everything. You've got it all sorted out there. Um, and the, the part of it where, you know, Aries can be quite quick to make decisions, quite impulsive in its decision making. Mercury retrograde in Aries is actually reminding us uh, to slow down just a little bit and to go up, oh, okay, take a beat, pause, and then you move. Okay, so we're moving on to Scorpio now. Scorpio, right. Let me just get my phone. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you so much for being here, everyone. And I will read through your comments at the very end. Scorpio. Okay, so what we have been discussing so far for you Scorp for every sign scorpio is that there is a bundle shape happening in the sky and a lot of this energy then is being derived into your sixth house right so there's great focus and concentration being placed into the sixth house of your health your routines your daily habits your rituals your schedules okay um even just thinking about productivity levels, time management, all the rest of it. So 
I think that this is a significant new chapter being ushered in for you, Scorpio, when it comes to these matters and how such matters are also linked in with management, leadership, right? Um, being this director, being someone who is well known, <laughs> being someone who can uh, take the lead, give di give directions to other people really um, and do so really, really well. So there could be some type of, of upgrade or just a new chapter, right? A new chapter, a new beginning, a new rule uh, when it comes to your work and services, even thinking about your confidence levels and how your confidence is really going to shine through and how it's just going to be this attitude of I've got this, there's no stopping me. But hey, Chiron is also a part of this. So mm, Chiron can also highlight a little bit of, will I be rejected? Will I be enough? Can I do this? Do I have what it takes? Is this going to work out? I'm a little bit fearful. I'm a little bit apprehensive about this. So doubts can, of course, come through. But I think it's also about how you manage those those doubts and those, those anxieties and those worries, those stresses, right? Even the sixth house can look at our stress levels. <sighs> Scorpio, <gasps> that's a thing. My gosh, right? Sixth house can, our, our, can rule our stress levels. So it could very well be, Scorpio, that around this eclipse, your stress is like, oh, right? You're up to here, okay? This is kind of similar with Libra, with the energy from Pisces in, in the sixth. But for you, Scorpio, it is, it's something. Because I think this can look at, <gasps> okay, things aren't moving quick enough or this is not happening the way that I thought it would or the way that I want it okay and maybe that can bring up some fear or there can be impatience but I just want to remind you okay Mercury is retrograde Mercury is retrograde in the sixth house there Scorpio for you so if you can just try your best to pause reflect get get the necessary information that you need right get get the information get, collect the figures collect the data do your research take some time i mean for example right this could be some scorpios who are looking for a new job and you're like okay i have to do the interview process i have to go through all of these job titles and rules and apply for this apply for that and it's just taking your time to work with Mercury retrograde in a way, right? That can even present perhaps, I don't know, a new up or an old opportunity rather that becomes presented to you, right? So for instance, a previous work situation that comes up and it's like, oh, okay, talk to this person about it. And then you go from there, right? So there could be some past situations, right? Past conversations even to do with co-workers, colleagues employees and you you have a greater understanding then of what you want based on those conversations that you have um and then as well this could even be tied in with your health right i would even just say mental health could be a bit you know a bit of a sensitive topic in this regard maybe this is why it's so important for you scorpio to to maybe even talk with someone or just to be vocal about how you're feeling. I mean, it could be that many Scorpios, you are feeling the intensities, right? You're feeling the pressures at work or you're just feeling overwhelmed or it's just a lot at the minute. But hey, this is also where the South Node um, comes into the equation and why the bundle shape is so important to kind of remember um, in terms of Okay, be mindful of what you neglect. And so for the South Node being, with the South Node being in Libra, do you know, maybe maybe all you need, Scorpio, is just a day, right? It's a day where, or a time period, it doesn't necessarily just have to be on the day of the eclipse, but a period of, I'm not going on my phone. I'm not going on there. Um, do you know what? I'm actually just going to read for a while or I'm going to play video games for a while. Yeah, go play video games. Or I'm going to go for a walk with my friend. Or I'm going to go for a nice coffee or, you know, go on a date with my partner. Or perhaps it's just about rest. Taking some time, put your feet up, listen to music. What inspires you? What moves you? And it's not so work heavy. So that can maybe be quite, quite helpful. But I also want to say that Mars 
which is the dispositor of all of the Aries, Mars is in the fifth house, right? So the work stuff, the services stuff, the routine stuff, that is then linked to romantic relationships, your creative endeavors, your passions, your interests, right? I think this could even be where hobby like a hobby that you really really love and enjoy there's just more of a desire to want to follow that or to make an effort when it comes to it and um, could even be that children is a big part of this right so thinking about all the work that you're putting in the effort that you're putting in as a way to provide for your children even as a way to um make money for your hobby <laughs> right it's this whole thing of work hard, play harder, whoa, you know, so it could be that, right, because the fifth house looks at play and fun and enjoyment, right, but there will be a conjunction, okay, so there will be a conjunction of Mars and Saturn in your fifth house on the 10th of April, so just two days after this eclipse, ushering in a new cycle, a new two-year cycle to do with what? To do with enjoyment and fun and play and pleasure and entertainment. But uh, Saturn is a little bit, mm, okay? Saturn in the fifth house is a bit of a diner sometimes, I think, because <laughs> trust me, I know I've got Capricorn in the fifth, but <laughs> just, it's sort of like, okay, Scorpio, you know, I hear you. You want to have all these these moments and the fun and the time off and everything, but actually there's a little bit of work that needs to be done in order to make that happen, right? And so perhaps it is about having some type of healthy boundaries or knowing even what your limits are, right? Limiting your time in terms of what is free time, um, even just being disciplined when it comes to a hobby of yours that you have. I mean, for example, if you want to really, really get good at a at a hobby, at a passion, at an interest, this cycle begin um, beginning from the 10th of April is going to say, okay, Scorpio, well, hmm, time to plan, <laughs> time to create some structure, some form to this hobby of yours and see where it can take care. Even just thinking about the spiritual elements that can be brought into all of this and the emotional maturity as well, even that emotional maturity and how that relates to children that you have. Okay, so we're going to move on to Sagittarius. Okay, Sagittarius, let's see. Thank you all for being here. And I will look at your comments at the very end, just trying to get through everybody. Sagittarius. All right. So we talked about all the fun, all the play, all the pleasure, entertainment. Oh, time off to do with Scorpio with the Pisces energy in the fifth. But for you, it really is about all of this stuff. This is like, okay, I want the freedom. I want my independence. I want to break. I just want to break free. I just, I just want to do the things that I love, that I enjoy. I want to spend time with my children. I want to follow my passions, my creativity. Ah, oh, right. So there is this rush, this excitement, this enthusiasm pouring out of many Sagittarians during this solar eclipse. High healing, high remarkable, high fascinating. But hey, you know what? We've been talking about this bundle shape and the bundle shape can then suggest this great focus, this great concentration. And so for you, Sagittarius, much of the focus, much of the concentration is being placed into your creativity, okay? Being placed into things that you love, things that you enjoy, the things that just fuel you, right? They, oh, they light you up, they make you feel good, right? And I think as well, a lot of this even has to do with leadership, right? Being a leader, um, being an organizer, being a mentor. I mean, Chiron's also a part of it, right? Chiron can be this teacher, this mentor. Hey, maybe this is even thinking about helping other people through their own healing, or this is about, and by tapping into fun or by, well, tapping into your inner child by being fun, by being playful, there's a lot of healing in that, right? So, by just having that ability to, to go with it, I think is going to invite such remarkable healing um, opportunities for you. Um, and then what I even further want to mention is stuff to do with romantic relationships, even Venus, right? So Venus is in the fifth house too. So it could be quite a flirty time, 
and this doesn't necessarily have to be just about romantic relationships in terms of a romantic partner of course it can be so this could be spicing things up a little bit uh this could be about uh being quite energetic uh when it comes to romance and love but hey this can also be relationships that are platonic as i was trying to mention there platonic relationships right the people that you surround yourself with that you enjoy the company of so yeah there could be something quite exciting to do with platonic relationships and just the enjoyment that you get from those relationships and hey new relationships initiating right initiating relationships and and going on this whole new self-discovery journey, right? Because the eclipse, of course, is the eclipse is going to usher in new significant chapters and shifts and changes, which are going to be pretty remarkable. And you may really seek to accomplish. You could very much have this tunnel vision though, right? This tunnel vision of, okay, this is the, the passion. This is what I love. This is, this is what I really want. I, I, me, 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 right? But perhaps life node in Libra is kind of indicating a little bit of balance in terms of, okay, yeah, we, we get that there's free time there, there's things to be enjoyed, there's experiences to be had, but just do keep in mind that there's also other things to do with friendships, communities, teams, right? Past relationships, perhaps there's something maybe lingering a little bit, or there's just some unanswered questions or maybe it's just about also taking some time to consider okay well how is it that I am playing a role within the group what is my role within the collective here and what does that look like and maybe it is about trying to come at things from a more balanced place right let's talk about <laughs> Mars so Mars is in the fourth house. It's the dispositor of all that fifth house stuff. So the children stuff, which is another thing, which to be fair, I didn't mention, children is tied to the fifth house. So for you, Sagittarius, it could also be significant new chapters to do with children, or this is about the play and the fun that's to be had with your children, or even, hey, perhaps not even children that are your children, right? You could look after children for other people, or you could um, even be tapping into your own inner child in this regard, the relationship that you have with your inner child, that could be a big thing that comes up and there's healing that's happening there. Mm, quite wounding as well, right? Quite sensitive. It's like, oh, I felt that. Oh, okay. I didn't think that my inner child would would feel that so deeply, but it did. And and what does that mean for me, right? And Sagittarius, you're very much about meaning and you're probably going to really question all of this as you do, as you do. But Mars, so Mars is then in the fourth house and Mars can maybe even tie in with all the children's stuff, the creativity stuff, the, the, the things that you love, the things that you enjoy. Um, and maybe we'll have something to share with us about family, home, where so where you live, where you feel supported, where you feel a sense of belonging, right? There there could be a lot of emotions that are going to come up and out of you. And, and I think even with the conjunction between Mars and Saturn on the 10th of April, that is going to usher in a whole new cycle to do with your emotional needs, to do with your own sort of understanding of what you need to feel safe and secure and which people are in your life and you know you do feel supported around them and is it that you know there's some new goal in mind or there's some new long-term situation coming up with respect to property or housing and you know for example of course this is a two-year cycle right so when mars and saturn do conjunct on the 10th of april which is two days after the eclipse that will usher in a new two-year cycle or so. So that cycle could consist of, okay, let's get serious about a, a living situation matter, right? Let's get serious about a family matter or serious about the, the property stuff or the healing stuff to do with your own emotional needs, your own emotional security, 
And then lastly, Mercury retrograde. So that's going to be in your fifth house as well. Could be a few old conversations coming up actually, right? Conversations that you've had in the past about love, about romance, perhaps with a romantic partner in this way. Or this could be conversations to do with ego, right? To do with self-expression, how you shine, how you feel in terms of like being seen, right? Yeah, so there's something here about how you're seen and how you shine. And those conversations can maybe be a, a good way to sort of gauge what wasn't fully talked about last time what else can can I share or what else have I not thought of yet could even be a certain creative practice a project could be a project that you've been working on for a while um but you kind of left it for a while but you bring it back during the mercury retrograde and you think right okay it's time to finally get get this on on with right it's time time to do it so Capricorn next. Capricorn. All right, Capricorn. So the eclipse is going to be happening in your fourth house, right? So significant new chapters to do with family, home, property, emotional security, your ancestry, the past oh the past is going to come up for you Capricorn oh let me tell you oh it's gonna let me just take some water here for my throat I've been talking so much the past this to me is a big one because Mercury is retrograde in the fourth for you and then there's also the eclipse and then we also see here that there's a lot happening in this third house for you. And that's quite karmic. And Saturn is your chart ruler. And then we also have Saturn conjunct Mars on the 10th of April, two days after the eclipse, which we're going to get to. But that's going to be the start of a new karmic cycle then for you in your third house. Again, we're going to get to that in a, mo in a moment. Okay, <clears throat> so Capricorn I think that, well, firstly, the bundle, the bundle chart shape, there's great focus and concentration being placed into that of property and home and emotional security. Thinking about what you want within these areas, what you are also receiving, what you're getting from these areas, even thinking about your emotional needs, your emotional well-being anything that you're actually wanting to move on from, but there's still some questions that haven't been quite answered and you're still sort of reflecting on, okay, belonging, belonging, emotional security, how do I put myself first? Is this really what I want? Do I really want to be a part of this thing? And do I really want to live here? Does this make me feel comfortable? Do I feel supported in this relationship, right? Even Venus is in the fourth house as well. Venus can maybe communicate something about your relationships and partnerships in terms of what you want and what you truly desire, right? Um, but yes, I think there's just a lot of reflection happening. And the reflection, I feel, is also tied to the past, right? It's tied to your ancestry, your conditioning, your unconscious habits. <sighs> Many Capricorns, you are changing unconscious habits that have been, they've been repeating, repeating, right? Unconscious habits um, to do with family and home, uh, to do even... <laughs> with Saturn, especially in the third house, to do with siblings, cousins, your neighborhood. And it's, I think a lot of it is just to do with, okay, what are you ready to move on from? What are you ready to shed? What are you ready to let go of? What is causing you great suffering? What just isn't fully aligned with you spiritually anymore? And we're kind of getting into the third house in combination with this a bit because, hey, you know, Mars is the dispositor of all of the fourth house stuff for you. So that Mars energy in the third speaks to the, the family stuff, the past stuff. And so I think for you, it's having this, this focus, this strong will to want to finally address the family issues, to finally address what hasn't been looked at within yourself 
about the past and what decisions you are finally ready to make and how you can move forward. Naturally, with Mercury being retrograde, it is about the reflect, the reflection, the going within, the trying to make sense of this and that. Um, and then things will become more and more clear as time does go on. You know, I would even say with this one, Capricorn, uh, when it comes to any significant property stuff, right, property, housing, stuff like this, I would just say to be mindful of who you're speaking with, what types of employees you're dealing with, what information you're gaining. There's just, things are not quite clear with the Mercury retrograde. And it's just about having some time to go over all of the paperwork or to have those necessary discussions that you need to have so that you can gain greater clarity. And Chiron is also a part of this, right? So Sun and Moon, the eclipse is conjunct Chiron. So there's, there, I think there is a great deal of generational healing happening for many Capricorns. And this is sensitive. This is heavy. Like when I'm really thinking about this, I'm feeling into this energy. It's very, very heavy. But I think it's, it's this whole thing of, well, someone had to do it someone had to do it Capricorn and I gotta give it to you Capricorn it was you it's you yeah you're the one I think within a certain family unit within a an emotional situation thinking about even a circle of close people that you've known for years you're the one who is taking that step and you're going hey I want to work on me I want to do this for me and I want to do this for my future, the future generations that are to come after me. So there's so much depth to this and healing involved in this. And there's also, hey, you know, some wounding and the sensitivities that are coming up in terms of times that you're going to fall apart, times when Capricorn, I know you're very emotional people, you just don't show it, you don't necessarily let it out, right? But this is about holding space for that part of you that can fall apart in your home. It doesn't have to be, you know, in front of other people, which you're not probably not going to do that anyway, let's face it. But it's just allowing yourself to fall apart, collapse when you need to, to hold space for those bigger emotions, those bigger feelings. And hey, the other thing about it is Capricorn, you could very well be helping someone else through this, right? This could be family members who are really going through it themselves. Small children you have, um, your mother, your father. Yeah, this could be where you are indeed supporting your family through their own emotional needs. Or this could be where you are making peace with a, an emotional situation that it's just not doing it for you anymore. There's nothing there for you. There's no emotional support that you're going to receive. And that is painful. That is so painful because Capricorn, you went back time and time again and you put in that effort, you make it very clear, but there's just none of that. Mm, there's none of that acknowledgement. It's There's nothing emotional there for you really. So it's, it's understanding that or, or even acknowledging that rather. And what I also want to mention is the conjunction. So there will be that conjunction which involves your chart ruler, Saturn. Saturn and Mars will conjunct on the 10th of April, two days after the eclipse. And um, that is going to usher in a new sort of two-year cycle within your third house. So what is this to do with? I think it's to do with how you talk to yourself. And also any significant new goals, which it's about being... Um, it's about being uh, committed. It's about persevering, thinking about the long haul. So goals to do with your intellect, learning. This could be a new subject. Uh, this could even be something related to your neighbors, excuse me, your neighbors, your cousins, your siblings, any certain boundaries even that you're making, right? Boundaries that you're making when it comes to these individuals in your life. And what steps you're putting in place then so that you can 
manage your own energy levels and honor honor your energy your energy levels this is about spiritual responsibility within these areas and it's also about having healthy boundaries and it's about emotional maturity okay so aquarius aquarius all right let's see for you aquarius okay right so the eclipse is going to be happening in your third house and this eclipse of course <clears throat> it's going to usher in new significant chapters to do with well let's let's think about to do with the type of relationship that you have with your siblings hey uh this could be where it's the beginning of a whole new chapter with a sibling in your life this could be for example you revisiting an old discussion with a sibling who maybe you haven't really talked to very much over a period of time but around the eclipse throughout mercury retrograde i say this because mercury is retrograde from the first of april until the 25th of april in your third house as well aquarius but around that time period it could be where you get in touch honestly with the sibling <clears throat> Or a sibling reaches out to you and a relationship comes about from that a new version of a relationship or it's that you are seeking something new about general relationships third house i see as a house this is quite interesting this is it actually just came to me there now <laughs> But the third house, I think, is a house that shows us where we are more likely to chit chat. It's a house of small talk. So whenever you go to <clears throat> grab your morning coffee, whenever you go to school and you catch the bus, you say hello to the bus driver, you say hello to the barista at your coffee place. What's this? Is there any small talk? How do you how does that go? So this i feel is a very third house thing it's just more of our general discussions and i think i think in actuality small talk can teach us so much about how to be confident and, and how to um maybe kind of just be more just relaxed in conversation with people and it's interesting because I think Aquarius is a sign that isn't really the biggest fan of small talk, right? Aquarius can kind of just dive deeper, right? Deeper into conversations, um, conspiracies, maybe uh, astrology, psychology, right? These sort of deeper subjects. But I can't help but think that this eclipse period is is actually very interesting in that you're learning the power of small talk and how it can be so useful <laughs> how it can be so playful and fun and it doesn't have to be so serious <laughs> it doesn't have to be so serious and maybe as well there's an element of don't ever think it it's like it's okay <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> so there can be a bit of that right so all of this really is to say that I think there is a great focus. I think there is such concentration being placed into conversation, speech, dialogue, right? This could even just be as a testing ground, if you will, right? Just challenging yourself to, to communicate in new ways, kind of moving away from the small talk stuff. This could even be uh, communication in a whole new setting, in a whole new setting. So, I mean, if, for example, in front of a class, in front of a group, in front of an audience, a smaller audience, and there is the, the need to communicate. So basically, your communicative skills, Aquarius, oh, they're changing. Oh, they're changing. 
And this may be quite uncomfortable because perhaps a part of it lies in, what if I say that thing and, and I'm rejected? Or what if they don't get the joke? Or what if they think I'm weird? Or, uh, you know, with Ky I say this because Chiron is there. And so Chiron can sort of lean toward a bit of self-doubt, a bit of criticism, fears of rejection, fears of trying things outside of our comfort zone a bit. And just kind of going, oh, I don't know. So, yeah, I think this solar eclipse could be a good time of just jump in. Jump in, Aquarius. You never know. <laughs> kind of goes back to what we've been saying. If you don't try, you don't know. Like, you don't know. You could try to go in and, and um, communicate in a certain way. And you could be talked over. Or you could be really interrupted or it could go in a really embarrassing way <laughs> where you're left sort of shocked a bit, but just laugh it off. That's okay. Right. I think Aries is just sort of showcasing a bit of childlikeness in a way and confidence, confidence in what you're saying as well. It's also about, yeah, having this, this sense of, yes, I know what I'm talking about. Just go for it. I can do this. <laughs> But of course, with Mercury being retrograde, just take some time to, to rethink a few things, right? It could be a, an old sort of program or a style, like a version of, of how you speak that maybe you once did, but you stopped for a while and now you're sort of bringing it back or you're just playing around, just play around with ideas. That's another thing. The third eyes can look at our ideas what a creative time for many Aquarians. Woo, very creative, very passionate, very energetic right now for Aquarians. The ideas are just going boom, 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 right? All the social media stuff and posting and everything perhaps for some Aquarians or any music that you're working on, even Venus is there in the third house, any songwriting that you're doing, poetry that you're writing, whatever have you. You know, Aquarians usually have something creative that they love to do such creative minds, always changing, always on the move. <laughs> so yeah, this, this could be an eclipse that's certainly going to highlight these things and usher in new cycles. And what I also want to mention with the bundle is that, you know, it could be where you're so tunnel visioned <laughs> when it comes to, oh, my voice, what I'm saying, what I'm saying. But maybe it's about stepping outside of all of that a little bit and looking at the bigger picture with the South Node in Libra, right? Consider, okay, it's still about the bigger picture. It's okay. It's not about, you know, thinking too heavily about, uh, oh, being self-conscious or um, am I doing this? Am I doing this? Just let people sort of make their own decisions, flow a little bit, relax a little bit. Um, it could even be that there's something about long distance travel that's coming up and you have these certain um, things in mind, right? You're thinking about, okay, I want to go here and there, etc. cetera. Uh, so just remember that there are other things that you are seeking. Um, and this is just a little time period of, okay, this is the priority right now. And this is what I'm focusing on. Okay. Let's think about Mars. So Mars is the dispositor of all of the third house stuff. And that's in the second house. Oh, interesting. So the communicative stuff, the idea stuff, <laughs> somehow linked in, connected to your finances, your stability, your security, your comfort levels. I think that this is highlighting that two days after the eclipse, so from the 10th of April, a new cycle is going to be ushered in regarding long-term investments. Aquarius, this is pretty good for you because it's like, I'm going to think about long-term money opportunities. How can I set myself up Plan, 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 plan. <laughs> plan it out, Aquarius. Show dedication, show determination, show discipline and control. But come with these things. I just want to say this, which I think you will, this is what will happen for you. This is how it will kind of play it for you. But 
coming at these things in a spiritual way, okay, where you showcase spiritual responsibility, you also stay true to what your morals are. Mm. You stay true to what your morals are and you practice emotional maturity um, as well. Spiritual responsibility and emotional maturity. And do keep in mind, like I say, Saturn is the chart ruler, okay? And therefore there is great significance in this conjunction and the conjunction, it's ushering in the beginning of a two-year cycle, a new two-year cycle within your second house. Right, Pisces, Pisces, we're on to you last. As always, Pisces, as always. Right, Pisces, Pisces, Oh. This indeed is a big energetic shift. Energetic shifts are happening for Pisces, especially because the dispositor of all of the Aries energy is in your first house. And I mean, there's going to be a conjunction of Saturn and Mars on the 10th of April, just two days after this eclipse. And that is going to usher in a whole new energetic cycle for you full of spiritual wisdom, spiritual insights, taking your spiritual insights to the next level. But not just spiritual insights, Pisces. This is also about art, creativity, right? Things to do with the Pisces energy, of course. But it's about the long haul. It's about the plan. It's about okay, how can I set myself up in such a way where I'm successful so I can be somewhat disciplined, where I can practice control? And hey, you know what? This could also be the beginning of a whole new goal cycle related to your identity. This this identity, of course, that we talk about. So perhaps this could be changes to do with your living situation, changes to do with your relationship status, changes to do with your name, changes to do with your work changes to do with your role within your work. You know, these, ooh, these things that I think are going to be really quite um, significant for you and they're going to play out and unfold over the next couple of years. So I just wanted to start with that conjunction for you because I feel it's it's really relevant because you have Saturn and Mars both in the first house, but hey, the eclipse itself, oh, this is a new significant chapter, new intentions, profound intentions to do with the financial prospects of yours, anything that you're wishing to succeed within, uh, thinking about leadership positions, rules, thinking about any creative ideas you have, being a visionary, my goodness, Pisces, you can be such visionaries. Uh, when it comes to this, the skills and talents that you have. And as well, I think this is about considering the value of your energy. And what I, what I think, why I think this is important, it's, it's sort of like, okay, my energy is like currency. It's kind of seeing that, okay, this is the amount of effort that I'm putting into such and such. Okay. Well, um, I can see that it's it's worth this much or it's maybe even just thinking about it doesn't have to be money of course I mean it could also be about is it worth your health is it worth um how it is that you maybe take some time for yourself and how you sort of come at those areas in more of a well-rounded way um it, it's interesting because you can kind of be like this Pisces right can be quite uh what's the word holistic in your in your view <laughs> is that is that the word I'm looking for but indeed I just think that this is a, a solar eclipse of course there's the, the let's take this a step back there's the bundle chart shape happening okay and that's gonna be prim, prim, uh, primarily in your second house so great focus and concentration being poured into your skills your talents and your value system and so I think your remarkable things can be accomplished then uh, when it comes to these areas and even your finances, your wealth and your, your security, right? Your, what it is that you um, need in terms of feeling secure and feeling supported and feeling comfortable, feeling safe, all these types of things are really coming up 
And I think a lot of it has to do with, okay, taking that leap, being courageous, putting yourself first, having this oomph about you, being a trailblazer, right? Being a trailblazer, having the ability to say, hey, I want this. I'm going to go for this. I'm passionate, woo, right? Just forging your own path, this self-discovery journey that you're going to go on when it comes to these areas, Pisces. But of course, Chiron, firstly, firstly, Chiron is there. So there could be some elements of, oh, my talents. What if I'm not as good as that other person there? Or am I sure? Can I do this? Mm, I don't know. I'm kind of doubting in my talents here. It's not, it's not that good, is it? Oh, so these little doubts that can creep in or these wounds, right? It's almost like these doubts are there because other people have been like mean or rude or cruel, or they've, you know, they've tried to put you down or tried to undervalue you and, and your worth and everything. Oh my goodness, Pisces, you're healing so much when it comes to your self-worth. Okay. And a lot of that has to do with, it is about going within. And I love this about Pisces because Pisces, you remind us that it is about what's happening within and it's not about trying to like prove to everybody like this is me. You know, it's more about, okay, I am going to present, but if other people try to push or diminish or do whatever, I'm just going to pull back, right? I'm just going to pull back and I know my worth. I know what I'm about. So there's there's this kind of slowness, this the softness, right? It's creating space for this this more gentle part of you that I think is going to be even it's going to emerge more and more basically <laughs> as the eclipses start to continue. And it's so interesting because the north node is also going to enter your sign. Mm at the end of the year okay it's got a dear side more more than that but that's gonna that's gonna be so interesting i'm even reflecting that on me for myself because i have a virgo rising so it's gonna happen in my seventh place so i'm like you know anyway <laughs> anyway i'm just i'm just having fun with you but there can be the tunnel vision okay so there can be that tunnel vision as well when it comes to all of the self-worth and the healing that's happening and the unfolding that's happening when it comes to your your finances and so on and your security so with that just recognize okay maybe there is another part of it of okay well there is there could be deeper stuff there could be much deeper stuff buried underneath maybe psychological things to do with harmony and balance and, and how you wish for things to be there, things to work through maybe within relationships and partnerships and what's to be sort of shared and, and brought forward or sort of let go of perhaps in this regard. So it's also just keeping that stuff in mind as well. Um, and let me just see here if there's anything. Yes, the last thing, Mercury Retrograde. So Mercury retrograde is also in the second house for you. This could be just a good time period then for you to make sure that you're going over financial planning, budget spending, habits of yours, stuff like this. Just take some time um, to go over all of those necessary steps and any information that you've maybe overlooked. It could also be a time where uh, certain skills that maybe you left on the shelf for a while right a certain talent that you wanted to try out or something you wanted to practice that comes back up and there's a greater surge of energy and excitement and passion and I just think in general Pisces just yeah follow your passions <laughs> remember just to follow your passions as well and I think that this this could very well shine through a great deal for you during eclipse season all right, so that is everybody. Thank you so much for being here, everyone. Oh, we going forward. You're not going forward for me. And just to remind you that I do have a Patreon, right? I have a Patreon. You can find me. Um, it's in the description box. There's daily forecasts, which, yes, I do those every day. 
behind the scenes and content is available, early access to a new video each week, which is ad free by the way, and PDF guides to go right along with new videos. And I do wanna say thank you so much to my patrons, honestly, thank you for all of your support. I really appreciate you. Thank you so, so much. And I will just see here, so, Aries 12th, hello Pamela, welcome. Brianna, you're chatting away. Um, okay, okay, more conversations between Pamela and Brianna. And what we see here, Dr. Jedi Vampire God King, hi, welcome to you. Ray the Sun World, hello, welcome. Uh, Eddie, hi, Eddie, welcome, welcome to you. Synchronicity Gabby, hi, hello and let's see let's see let's see oh you said spot on for virgo Woo! Waha. okay um rachel you said yep uh mystic hello welcome to you as well and canis lupus hello to you oh thank you so much thank you for being here thank you for watching and crystal hi to you as well Everyone, thank you for being here, um, for watching. And if you did enjoy listening, if you enjoyed watching, you can always buy me a coffee, but it's no pressure. And you can always book a reading with me by going to hannahsellsbar.com as well if you would like something a lot more personal, a lot more in depth, indeed. Thank you all so much for being here. And hey, good luck during this solar eclipse. Good luck, I, I hope it serves you well. And yeah, um, next video, next video coming up, I will let you know. You will see it posted in the lives. Thank you for being here, everyone. Have a lovely, a lovely weekend. I'm actually really looking forward to the workshop tomorrow, um, the Unknown Perfections workshop uh, with a few different uh, students. Is, would students be the word then? <laughs> but yeah, I cannot wait. I, I cannot wait to present tomorrow. Oh, exciting. So exciting. Um, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Thank you so much again. And I will talk to you all very, very soon.